Hello and welcome back. It's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're going to be playing Green Woodpecker. Now I hope that you all had a, a lovely Easter break and uh, I admit I was sort of planning to do like um, an Easter egg hunting puzzle and I haven't really done one just right out of time so apologies for that but I still will probably try and do something in April where the idea would be that I'd hide in an outro some clues to another video and another puzzle and you know maybe have some kind of giveaway for anyone that actually leaves a comment in that particular puzzle so stay tuned for that not well executed for easter not well executed for the month of march but that will be the plan for something to do in april anyway just uh quickly about woodpeckers before i actually take a look at today's puzzle so we're actually quite fortunate in that where we live in london there's quite a few parks near us. I mean, deliberate, you know, design choice here. We made sure that we are not far off a number of different parks so that we can actually walk our dogs. And regularly when we're walking them in the morning, we can actually just hear woodpeckers all around us just having a lovely time with those trees. So constantly hearing them pecking away with that sort of spring-like action that they have when they're actually feasting. Anyway, let's take a look at today's puzzle and rule sets. Let's see what we have in store. So, Green Woodpecker by Marty Sears, and you can clearly see the woodpecker here, uh, a green one with a, a red head at the top. I didn't know that was actually traditional, that's not the ones I've necessarily seen. Very long beak, of course, to actually peck away, and it looks like, I guess, some grass, maybe? It's quite unusual, and water, and maybe sun in the top. I'm not quite getting some of these references, but lovely picture for sure from Marty. Rules-wise, we've got normal Sudoku rules apply. That means place the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Then we have German whisper lines. So adjacent digits on a green line must have a difference of at least five. If this cell was two, if this cell here was two, then these two cells would have to be seven, eight, or nine to be five or more away. Um, once you get something like a, an 8 or a 9 in here, let's say it's an 8, this would have to be 1, 2 or 3 to be 5 or more away. And you can see we end up with this pattern where we're oscillating between high, low, high, low digits. And low being 1, 2, 3, 4, high being 6, 7, 8, 9, with no 5s. Up to the viewer as usual for you to determine why that is the case. The blue line at the bottom is divided by a box border. You can see that there are two cells here in box 7. There are three cells here in box 8. And the sum of the two segments must be the same. So these two cells, let's say they are 2 and 7, add up to 9, and therefore these three cells have to add up to 9, something like 1, 3, and 5. That would be one set of valid pencil marks for this particular region sum line. We have the black dots here for the eye. Uh, the black dot separates two digits with a 1 to 2 ratio. So, for example, if this cell here is a 2, this would have to be 1 or 4 to be in a 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, there's nothing in here about negative constraints, so I'm going to assume it doesn't apply. And therefore, if this is a 2 and this is a 4 and this is a 1, the absence of a black dot between this 2 and 4 is not a problem. Uh, the red bit at the top is a... I had it here. Adjacent digits on the red line have a different parity. So one is odd, the other is even. In our fictitious example earlier where I had this is a 1, that would mean this would have to be even, 2, 4, 6, or 8. And this would have to be odd, so 3, 5, 7, or 9. That would be a valid set of pencil marks on this red line. And then lastly, a digit on yellow circles is odd. You can see that there is a number of them throughout here. For these to be odd digits, they would have to be from 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. So, plenty of rules today in uh, this puzzle from uh, Marty Sears and the Green Woodpecker. As usual, if you want to go hunting for woodpeckers, I don't know if it's hunting, bird watching would be more likely. Uh, link will be in the description down below as usual for you to play along and solve this particular puzzle. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock, see how I get on. So what I'm tempted by is a bit of colouring. So remember in my 
walkthrough of the rules, the fact that the cells alternate between low and high, what I know is all of these cells have the same polarity. So let's call it purple. Then all the other cells in between them have a different polarity and I already know what is low and what is high. And I'll explain why in a second. I'm just going to go with orange. I missed this purple. Right, black crop dots. The nature of this one to two ratio makes this very easy. If you think about the black crop dot pairs, you could have one, two, two, four, and four, eight. And the last set of options is three, six. Now, the fact that they're all the same polarity, they're both orange, immediately says four and eight doesn't work because one is low, one is high. Three and six doesn't work, one is low, one is high. So we're left with a one, two, or a two, four pair. That means orange is low, I'm gonna go with blue. Purple is high, I'm gonna go with red. And we're gonna keep going from here. It also tells me that this is one, two, or four with a definite two between them. This would have to be one, three, or four. It can't be a two to be a low digit. Can actually probably do a little bit better. These two cells have the same parity. So if this is a one, this would have to be three. And because this can't be a three, this can never be a one. Interesting, okay. The other option is that this is, well, this can never be a four. And if, because if that's a four, this would have to be two to be the same parity and polarity. And obviously that would break this cell. So that's not a four, but it can be a two with a one, not a four. And this would have to be the four, just because of the interactions with this parity line. So we end up with a one, two pair, a three, four pair. Clearly one of these is a four, therefore this has to be a nine in the middle. This has to be at least a seven because it sees both a one and a two. Actually it sees a three and a four in here. So this is eight or nine. This can't be a four because if it is a four, this would be a double nine in the same row. So this is one, two or three. And this could be well a bunch of different things. But this is a good start. We've already placed a digit in under three minutes, and uh, we can keep going from here, I suspect. So well, what's catching my eye, and I think it's just visually it's catching my eye, is these three circles. And I'm going to sort of show you this with a bit of color. So let's imagine that these two are purple. We're back to oscillating. This has to be orange and this would have to be purple. We'll figure out which one is low and high in a second. But notice what that means. If this is low, this is a 1-3 pair. If this is high, this is a 7-9 pair. Now, we need another odd digit and it can't be whatever these two are. This has to be orange because essentially I'm exhausting my supply of purple odd digits, there can only be two of them, and therefore the remaining odd digit has to be orange. And I can actually color these as well. I don't know why I didn't see this earlier. Row eight, where does five go? And I mentioned in the rules that five can never be on German whisper lines. These are all German whisper line cells. That's the only place for a five. We've got two purples plus a third between these two cells, blue or red. So that means that I can only afford to have one more purple in these two cells that in these three cells that alternate. So essentially, it's got to be orange, purple, orange. And then obviously, continuing this purple means that this has to be orange, this has to be purple. And does it actually allow me to determine any colors? Maybe Let's think about, so I have two oranges and two purples. So essentially, in this line, I'm done with red. Because whichever one is red, whether it's purple or orange, I already have four of them. So these are blue, 
as in low, or a 5, and this one can't be a 5, that's blue, that's another 5. Frustratingly, it's not helping me with my colours. I was really expecting this will show me something. Yes, it does. Column 6. I've already placed all the low digits. Purple can't be blue, otherwise I'll end up with 5 low digits in column 6, which is impossible. So purple is high, orange is blue, or low, and this is another 5. I'm just going to, for consistency, color it grey. I don't know if I should be coloring the rest of the grid, but it's you can see how helpful that is, having all of these colors to actually help me determine this. In fact, with the 5 placed, I know that all of these now are high. Uh, four high digits and the five means that these two are low. In here, I have a high digit, a low digit, and a five. Not great. What can I do? Now that I know that this is a high digit and odd, this is seven, nine, this is one, three. I can keep going now. This has to be limited to one or two to essentially be far enough away from the seven. This could be a bunch of different things. So we'll, we'll move on from that. Can I keep going? This is 1, 3. This is 7, 9. Again, odd digits, so we can place them fairly quickly. Uh, this has to be relatively low. It can see at least two different digits, maybe three. So this is limited to 1, 2, 3. I can do 8, 9 pair. Only place left for a 4 is in here. That means this is another 1, 2, or 3. This can't be a 4. It's got two digits. This unfortunately can be a four with a nine in here. So what about one? Sorry, what about six? That can't be a six next to a three, four. That can't be a six with two different digits. They can't both be one. This is the only place for a six. Both of these are ones. That is therefore a three. That is a two. This can't be uh, six anymore because it's next to a two. So this is uh, seven, eight, or nine. Can we keep going? This is relatively high. I can see three unique digits, including a possible four. So we don't necessarily know. These are from seven, eight, nines. Don't know that either. This is eight or nine because the minimum here is three. Can I actually determine either of these? No, I can still do a four in here. Actually, one, three, four, three, nine seven, eight, just sleuth, pay attention. Eight in here means that's also a seven, nine pair. That two tells me that is a one. That is a two. This is eight or nine, that is possible. And this is one or four. It's not a one, it's a four. That is a nine. That is a seven. There's a flurry of activities now here. This is six, eight pair. Um, both, no, that can't be a six. That would require a double one. That's an eight. That's the six. This is a three. We know what this is now. In fact, this is just a seven. We can write it in. These are two fours. We know that, excuse me, two four. We know that these three digits now add up to 13. These three, these two digits have to add up to 13. From the remaining options of one, five, and eight, it is clearly the five, eight. That is the one. Then we have in here three, six, and nine. That is not a three. A seven, sleuth, come on, come on. Nine, not nine. Right, what is this cell? Six or eight, not determined yet. Three still allows us eight and nine in here. One goes with three, two goes with four. Surprisingly, still not determined. We do know that this is an eight. We know that's not a one. We knew that for quite some time, though. That's not news. This is not a six. Can't have a double one. And it's not seven or nine. That's an eight. This is two or three in here now. It's not a one. This two, three limits our options. Well, I mean, six was gone. Eight is gone. This is seven or nine. Neither of which, the seven, can't be next to three or four. That is a nine. I need a five in here. I'm just sort of thinking about, actually, hang on, let me do this. Two, five, six in row six, 
That is not two or six, that is a five. Two or six in here, six certainly doesn't work. That would require a double one. So that's two, that's six. These are not six or nine. This is a seven, eight pair. This is now one and five, and that one gives me an order. That's one, that's five. One, five. Yeah, still don't know what this is. No, not sure. Oh, hang on. Eight gives me seven, gives me eight. Right, one, five, seven. All of these are gone from this as an option. This is three or nine. Two gives me a four, a two. Four gives me the three, which gives me the nine. It forces this to be a one, forces this to be a two. This has to be an even digit, and six and eight and two are all gone. That's a four. Five is in here with a seven. Not determined. This is a six to complete the column slash box. Uh, that three still gives me eight or nine. That is not two or three. That is a one, which sadly leaves six on the table. That eight gives me a nine. I just need to do a bit of Sudoku, really. There is so much on here that I just need to just open my eyes to. And just as I say that, I run out of... Well, there's a seven in here, but I largely run out of possible digits, maybe. So this is two, three, four, six. That is not three or four. That is not two or six. And that is not a three. Not great. These are all odd digits. This is from two, four, six or eight. Whichever one is this cell, though, is somewhere in here. That is clearly not an 8. That is not a 4. That is not a 2. In here, I need 1, which can only be in one spot. 5. And then this even digit, which is not a 4. It is 2 or 6. Therefore, 4 is gone from here. This is a 2, 6 pair. That's a 3. That's a 4. Uh, 5 and 8, that was resolved as well. 9, yeah, that's resolved, that's resolved, that's resolved. Come on, sleuth. How are all of these things resolved and I'm just not seeing them almost immediately? Right, in this column, we need another 2, 4 somewhere in here, plus 7. Not great. Right, what about this column? That's all done. We need a 1 only be in here. A 7, I've got two options, and a 3, only one option. That's a 7, that's a 5, that's a 7, that's not the 7, that's the 7. This is 2 or 4. Did you mean to use colors? That's 2 or 4. What about this now? No. So in this row, I have another 6, 8, plus a four, which can only be in here. This is six or eight, it is not an eight, that's a six. That's an eight, that's a two, that's a six. That six, remember, has to be down here. Uh, this is not six or eight, it is just four, two, eight. Is it? Yeah, all of that is resolved, all of that is resolved. Yeah, we're very much on the finishing line now. Um, what do I need in here? I need a two, which I can't place yet, a five, can't place yet. How about eight? I'm sure I can place that. Yep. Nine I can place. Then I have two and five, which I can now place. That's five and two. Right. Two is only in here. Three can only be there. Four, five can only be here. If I've not made any mistakes, that's the finish with a six. Lovely, lovely puzzle, Marty. Um, it's an excellent puzzle for a Monday. You know, approachable, quick, lovely diagram to go. Uh, thank you so much for the puzzle. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the puzzle in the video. And um, yeah, we've got plenty of German Whisper lines uh, featured on the channel. So stick around for that playlist. Have a look at what's coming up next. Bye-bye for now.